Hey guys, today I'm going to be talking about why I don't set goals while I draw this. So if you've been following um, this channel much, you might know that one of the recurring themes here is that I like to kind of put practice and process over uh, goals and achievements. And this insight doesn't come from some great, you know, font of retrospection or wisdom that wells up from within me. But it comes from me making some really stupid mistakes that forced me to find a better way. So I'd like to share some of these mistakes with you um, in the hope that you don't waste quite as much time stumbling down some of the same paths that I did. Um, so let me start with the first one. Uh, many years ago, I set out to prove myself by running a marathon. I trained really hard. I ran every day. Um, you know, I did s some runs late at night um, during the week and, you know, 5 a.m. every Saturday morning, uh, you know, and go on these long runs. Uh, and I pushed through this stabbing, like, leg pain that accompanied the last few really long runs. And I had that same pain, you know, three quarters of, of the, the race on, on race day. Um, at the end of the marathon, you know, it was, it was, I felt awesome. I had accomplished something epic. Um, but, you know, I also did so at a price. I couldn't run anymore. A few short weeks after the race, I tried running again, but was stopped short after four miles by the same stabbing leg, leg pain that had harangued me throughout my training. Um, in the process of striving for my goal, I had permanently damaged my back. And this is an injury that persists today, almost 13 years later. I had accomplished my goal, but I did so at the expense of something that was more important, my health. So mistake number one is sacrificing things that really matter. And, you know, some people are so driven that they will give up anything to get what they want. And I've just decided that I'm not one of those people. There are things that are more important to me than winning. My health, my family, my integrity. The problem with focusing too much on goals and achievements is that they can blind you to the things that really matter. You sacrifice quality to finish a page. You skip your kid's dance recital to do figure drawing. You exploit another artist to make a buck. None of it is worth it. So don't sacrifice what really matters to you to get something done. At the same time um, that I was training to do this marathon, I was also still in film school and I was trying to make my senior film project. My goal at that time was to finish a film, to get it into film festivals, and then use this as like a jump start for my directorial career. Um, the project was, was pretty ambitious and expensive for a short student film. I called in every favor and all the goodwill from every family and friend I'd ever known. I mean, the film had pyrotechnics, period costumes, set pieces, um, fake mustaches. Um, it consumed a good year of my life in production, and in the end, it was kind of this beautiful looking mess. Um, I had an awesome art director and I had a great like director of photography, but I just I couldn't like pull it together into a really cohesive, um, engaging film. And the success of this film was crucial to my life plans. I had bet everything on it. And when it turned out to be a flop, I was stuck. So mistake number two is, is demanding success. Um, demanding success is problematic for a number of reasons. First of all, it raises the stakes. And raising the stakes raises stress unnecessarily. And unnecessary stress is the enemy to creativity and one of the big causes of procrastination. And if you've watched my video on procrastination, you'll know um, how I feel about that. And you, know, you can go read Neil Fiore's The Now Habit if you want to get deeper into that. Um, second, Demanding success blinds you to the many ways an experience can be beneficial to your growth. This is probably the biggest problem with an overemphasis on goals and achievements. But there's another big mistake that's worth mentioning before I elaborate on that point. When I finally accepted the failure of my film, it sent me into this spiral of self-loathing and despair that it took me years to climb out of. So mistake number three is basing self-worth on achievement. Um, I'm going to defer to Stephen Pressfield on this point. Um, basing your self-worth on success is what he calls a hierarchical orientation. This means that your self-worth is based on comparing yourself to others 
and your ability to deliver. So, you know, who has the most trophies? Who makes the most money? Who has the most followers on, you know, Tumblr and Facebook and YouTube? Um, the thing about basing your self-worth on success is that your self-worth constantly fluctuates depending on how you're doing in the rankings. Personally, I want to be happy with myself regardless of my place on the leaderboards. Um, this is a true story. There was a man that shot himself, um, and his suicide note was literally a checklist of his life's accomplishments. Getting things done didn't save him from despair, and it won't save you either. So what did I learn from these mistakes? Lesson number one, you're here to learn. Um, I can't emphasize enough how important this point is. It's the core of my philosophy of life and guides every decision I make. The main idea of the learning-based mindset is to evaluate every experience based on what you can learn from it. The beautiful thing about this is that it allows you to benefit from every experience you have. There are no successes or failures, only lessons. It's a far better way to measure performance too. With any target you're trying to hit, there may be innumerable things you are doing right and points you can improve on. Having a learning-based mindset helps you focus on specific information about what you're doing right and what areas you can improve in. Win-lose gives you no specific pointers to work on. You're constantly learning and growing. Your treasures are not the trophies that sit on your shelf, but the skills you are refining and the self-respect that comes from making yourself a better person every day. It can also save you from wasting a lot of time. Before you begin a project, ask, what can I learn from this? If it isn't something that's worth learning, then don't waste time with the project. Also ask yourself, what is the quickest way I can learn the lesson I want to learn here? If there's a quicker path to learn the lesson, take it. Recently, I decided to make some poster prints for an upcoming convention. I thought I could sell at least 10 at the convention, so I ordered 10 prints. When I got the ordered, I noticed that I had made a mistake in the printing. So at $13.99 per print, it cost me $139.99 to learn a lesson. Um, this is a lesson I could have learned much easier by making one test print before I made all the rest of the test prints. So, you know, always think beforehand if there is a faster way to get the information you need to learn what you need to learn. Um, lesson number two, focus on practice. A natural extension of the learning-based mindset is a focus on daily practice. What do I mean by practice? Well, practice can be a noun and a verb, and I guess both uses are important here. So one is the refining and perfecting of a skill through focused and thoughtful repetition. The other is the establishment of a ritual, a.k.a. a practice, uh, you know, meditation practice, uh, for example. Establishing a practice is also great for your sense of self-worth. It produces what Pressfield calls the territorial mindset. Rather than base your value on how you compare to others, you base your value on the area you inhabit. So like for a football player, the territory is the gym and the playing field. For the surgeon, it's the surgery table and the clinic. For the artist, it's the drawing table. Your sense of self-worth comes from the commitment you make to spend time every day in your territory. But your territory is just not, is not just where you do your thing, but the mindset of growth you bring with you. The drawing table is just kind of the boundary, but you're only skirting the edges of your territory until you determine to push into the interior and challenge yourself. Lesson number three, being persistent is more important than being consistent. Uh, so after the lecture on the importance of daily practice, I have a mission to make. I don't draw every day. I don't do 100%. If that was my goal, I would constantly be failing, but I've learned that even 10% is a step forward. Fortunately, I do better than 10% most of the time, but on the days I don't, I learn from it and I move on. Don't get caught in the sunk cost fallacy. The mistakes you made yesterday are only useful as information. If you're going to waste a day watching videos on YouTube, don't waste a second day beating yourself up for wasting time watching videos. Learn from your mistakes and move on. Lesson four, if you build it. Um, the best thing about the learning-based mindset is that just by persistently creating, you'll make awesome things. You'll finish books, you'll get better at your craft, and you'll enjoy every day along the way. Um, so I guess as a final note, I should say that I do sometimes set goals and I make plans and I try to hit milestones, but I do all of that in service of a larger purpose. They are targets with which to measure my progress and evaluate my performance, not ends in and of themselves. So to paraphrase some words from the Bible, goals are made for man, not man for goals. Use every tool at your 
Use every tool at your disposal to grow, to learn, and do amazing things. Each artist must find his way to do this, and any tool you can use to find success is a good one. Find it works for you, and go forth and learn. So those are my thoughts on setting goals. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them below. Don't forget to like this video. Please subscribe, and we'll talk to you next time.